Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome back to Anthocyanins again. So today we will discuss the last part of Anthocyanin, that is part 3. So before we discuss about Anthocyanins, let us go through the learning outcomes again. So far we have discussed the definition of Anthocyanins, significance of Anthocyanins, examples of various Anthocyanins and natural distribution of Anthocyanins. Of course, today also we will see in this lecture some more natural distribution of Anthocyanins and uh, we discussed in detail, especially in part 2, the chemistry of anthocyanin, where we mainly discussed the importance of uh, stability of anthocyanin since they are highly used as food colorant. So stability is an important factor because if they degrade, it can also affect the shelf life of the food. This lecture mainly we will discuss uh, the botanical name, family name, of plants containing pelargonidin, cyanidin, delphinidin, and malvidin. Also, at the end of this lecture, you will be able to outline the pharmacological activities of malvidin, and you will be able to explain a concept that is phytoalexins with certain example. Phytoalexin again, it is a concept of plant defense. So, first we will start with pelargonidin. If you look at the structure, can you can you tell me? The pelargonidine and pelar uh, pelargonidine and pelargonine. What type of glycoside it is? What type of sugar it contains? If you look at the structure, pelargonine. Pelargonidine is the name of a glycon, where it is attached to two glucose molecules at the third position and the fifth position. Okay, it forms 3,5-O diglucoside of pelargonidine. Okay, if you remember, we discussed in previous uh, lecture that among the different types of glycoside, the three glucosides, that means the sugar attached to third molecules are more available and more stable. Then the second variety comes 3,5-diglucoside. So this is an example of diglucoside, okay? And uh, don't get confused with the name, pelargonidine is the name of a glycon, whereas pelargonine is the name of uh, anthocyanin, that is glycoside. And this anthocyanin is found in the flowers of genus Pelargonia and it contains around 200 species and the botanical name is Pelargonium grebiolens. This is one of the botanical names okay, and this is the flower which represents this species and it belongs to the family Giraniaceae. Now talking about the major sources of Pelargonidin and Pelargonin it is uh, mainly found in chocoberries, blackberries, blueberries, from, uh, pomegranates, palm, cranberries, raspberries, strawberries and as compared to all of them it is heavily present or it is present in high quantity mainly in kidney beans. I hope all of you know what is kidney beans, all of you are consuming it a lot, it is good for health. I look at the structure, these two structures. Can you tell me what is the name of this first one and the second one? If you look at the difference, both of them differ only in the number of hydroxyl group that is present in ring B. The first one contains two hydroxyl group as compared to pelargonidine. This one contains three hydroxyl group. So the name of this is cyanidine. This is found in corn flour. This is the picture of a corn flour. And the next one is delphinidine, which is found in the plant of delphinium and viola species. These are the flowers which uh, represents the uh, delphinium and viola species. Next one is malvidine, okay, which is mainly available in blueberries. Okay. Look at the structure of malvidine. It contains uh, two methoxy group at the third and fifth position of the ring B. And its botanical name is vicinium Martilius. This is the uh, botanical name of blueberry and blueberry is uh, mainly rich in phenolic acid, flav uh, flavonoids, various types of flavonoids like hyperin and quercetin. They also contain anthocyanins around 0.5% such as cyanidin, delphinidin and malvidin. So even though I am talking about the presence of malvidin in blueberries, it also contains Okay, cyanidin and delphinidin. That is the other varieties of uh, what's the other varieties of anthocyanidin. 
but the presence of malbutin is more compared to the other anthocyanidin. Now regarding the various pharmacological activities that are mainly shown by blueberries are they are found to show vascular protection mainly by showing the anti adhering effect and they also show the anti inflammatory effect uh, following the same mechanism of action that we have already discussed under the chapter flavonoids. So since they are class of flavonoids they show the uh, antioxidant property by following the similar mechanism of action as we have discussed under the chapter flavonoid. Okay, they are a very good scavenger of free radical and clinically it is also used for eye diseases like uh, in the case of retina bleeding risk. It is also found to alleviate the cognitive decline, uh, decline that is mainly associated with uh, Alzheimer's patient or Alzheimer's disease and it is also found to improve the cognitive decline in other conditions like aging of patients or age related cognitive decline. So, for students I would like to suggest take a lot of blueberries, it will improve your memory. It also found to prevent the urinary tract infection even though exact mechanism of action is not yet established but it is found to be useful for the treatment of urinary tract infection and most importantly it can also lower the cholesterol and to total lipid level. So all this anti edemic effect and lowering the cholesterol and total uh, lipid level indirectly or directly helps in vascular protection. So uh, in other words treatment of hypertension. Next example is again very interesting one, Roselli. If you look at the picture this is the cup of the Roselli. Here the botanical name is Hibiscus subdarifer and the part of the plant that is mainly used uh, pharmacologically, okay, it is the calyx or cup of the flowers. This is the picture of calyx or cup of the flowers and it is widely used for the treatment of hypertension and here the mechanism is established. How they uh, how it is uh, useful for the treatment of hypertension? It is mainly by inhibiting an enzyme, okay, that is the angiotensin converting enzyme. So it is an example of strong SE inhibitor. And when you talk about the chemical constituent which is responsible for the inhibition of SE, mainly two anthocyanins, I repeat anthocyanins, not anthocyanidine, it is the glycoside form of uh, delphinidine and glycoside form of cyanidine is found to uh, be responsible for the inhibition of SEE and hence responsible for the treatment of hypertension. So here is the structure of delphinidine 3O sambuboside. Okay. The structure of cyanidine 3O sambuboside I have not given. It is almost similar. Only thing is here instead of delphinidine you will have cyanidine. The difference between cyanidine and delphinidine if you remember, delphinidine has three, uh, 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 sorry, the cyanidine has two OH group in the ring B, whereas delphinidine it has three OH group. That is the only difference, otherwise the whole structure is almost same. Now coming to another concept, another example, we call it as leucoanthocyanidines. Do you remember what it is? We have already discussed it okay, when we were discussing the classification of flavonoids. Leucoanthocyanidins, it is also a type of flavonoid. Okay. Why it is called as leucoanthocyanidin? It is a, a group of water soluble plant pigment okay, that is very closely related to the structure of anthocyanidins. And they are found to be converted to the related anthocyanidine okay, when it is boiled with hydrochloric acid and chemically they are known as flavon 3,4-diol. One of the example is malacacidine which is available in Acacia species. So if you see the difference between anthocyanidine and leucoanthocyanidine is in leucoanthocyanidine it does not contain positive charge on the ring oxygen of ring C. 
the oxygen atom of ring C, whereas anthocyanidin they have positive charge at the oxygen atom of the ring C. So this is the difference. But they are known as leucoanthocyanidin because they will get converted into the relative anthocyanidin when it is boiled with hydrochloric acid. Or in other words, when it comes in contact with stomach HCl, it is also formed to get converted into relative anthocyanidin. Now the next we come to the concept of phytoalexins. What are phy phytoalexins? They are nothing but the antibiotics that are produced by plants that act as toxins against the attacking organisms like uh, uh, parasites, pathogens, etc., which can cause harm to the plant. So, plant secrete phytoalexins as a defense mechanism to protect themselves from the attacking microorganisms and herbivores as well. And most important example of phytoalexins are uh, pterocarpans, which are mainly the derivatives of isoflavonoids. They are mainly found in the family of Fevesi and two of the more uh, examples of phytoalexins are medicarpin, look at the structure of medicarpin and pisatine. Look at the structure of medicarpin, if you just remove this bond from here, you see it looks like, if you just remove this bond between the oxygen and this, and if you count the number in from here, 1, 2, 3, is an example of isoflavonoid because the phenylalanine B is attached to the third position of the ring C. Similarly, here also, if you remove this bond from here, okay, if this is also an example of isoflavonoid, where the, if you start numbering from here, 1, 2, 3, the phenyl ring B is attached to the, or aromatic ring is attached to the third position of the ring C. So, two of the most uh, important example, medicarpin and pisartin. Now, regarding pisartin, I would like to mention that uh, it is the major phytoalexin that is made by the pea plant. Pea plant, the botanical name is Pisum uh, sativa. And most importantly, it, the pisartin was the first phytoalexin that was identified by the scientist and purified. After pisartin, there, uh, there have been many examples of phytoalexins that have been identified and purified from the plant, but pisartin is the first example of phytoalexin, remember that. Next example of phytoalexin is uh, rotinone. It is an odorless, colorless, crystalline derivative of, uh, derivative of uh, uh, isoflavonoid, which is the structure of rotinone. Okay. Here also again you see, if you remove this bond, this two bond, this bond between this ring C and this oxygen, you can see the numbering from here, 1, 2, 3, the phenyl ring, or aromatic ring is attached to the third position of the ring C. So this is also an, uh, an example of derivative of isoflavonoid. And this rotinone is used as a broad spectrum insecticide and pesticide. It is mainly found in dairies and long carpa species of dairies. We will see the picture in the next slide. And it is the root of this dairies and long carpas uh, from or uh, contains around three to five percent of rotinone. And it should be noted that rotinone is also uh, used as a fish poisoning material. Okay, and uh, earlier there was a there was an understanding that rotinone is not harmful to human body when it is consumed and they undergo metabolism in the human body. But recent study and research uh, research shows that rotinone is also responsible for many diseases or many toxicity in the human body and it is also found to be related to uh, the cognitive de decline of Parkinson disease mainly the, the people who are in a village, the people who are taking uh, surviving only on the vegetables or the farmers, those who are using a lot of pesticides based on rotinone, since they are consuming the, uh, their own plants uh, by using those pesticides, uh, pesticides containing rotinone, they are found to be suffering from the Parkinson disease okay, because of rotinone toxicity. These are the pictures of long carpus and there is. 
Now I would like to ask you certain questions are relevant to the chapter. Which of the following is an example of lipoanthocyanidin? We have studied it just now. Can you tell me? The correct answer is malacosidine. Next question. Which of the following plants glycoside is an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor for the treatment of hypertension? The correct answer is hibiscus subdelifer. That is option B. Can I ask you one more question from here? Which part of this plant is mainly used for the treatment of hypertension? If you remember, it is the calyx or cup of the flowers, okay, which is used. And two, anthocyanin, that is the glycoside of delphinidine and cyanidine is mainly uh, found to be responsible for the treatment of hypertension by inhibiting the enzyme SEE. The last question, which of the following phytoalexin is available in? Pisum sativum. Pisum sativum is the botanical name for pea plant. And the correct answer is pisatine. So with this, uh, I will finish my lecture. These are the references from where I have prepared my lecture, mainly the food applications and physiological effect of uh, anthocyanin as a functional food ingredient and chemical studies of anthocyanins, which is published in Food Chemistry 2009. Okay. Then again, uh, if you want to know or study more about the antioxidant or anti-inflammatory activities of anthocyanins, you can also find it in the recent publication from the Applied Pharmaceutical Journal of Applied Pharmaceutical Sciences that is published in 2011, it's a recent study. And tannins and anthocyanins from their origin to uh, wine analysis, a review article that is published recently last year, 2018. So with this, I finish my lecture. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice day.